Welcome to our review on the model of the atom. So what we need to know first of all is how the model of the atom has changed over time. And we need to know the names of the scientists and what they actually contributed to this whole theory. So the first scientist, we need to go back to the 1870s where we encountered John Dalton. And what he did was he actually carried out a series of experiments to see how elements combine. As a result of these experiments, he came up with his model of the atom, which was that the atoms are very small, indestructible spheres. He also thought that all atoms in an element are the same, and that atoms in one element are different from the atoms in other elements. The second scientist that contributed valuable ideas was J.J. Thompson in 1897. So his experiments involved cathode rays, which were given out by hot metals. And he discovered that these cathode rays were made from electrons. He also worked out that the electrons have a negative charge. So when he came up with his model of the atom, he suggested this plum pudding model, which was that we've got these negative electrons, which are actually in this positive cloud to give out this idea of the neutral atom overall. Our third scientist is Ernest Rutherford, who carried out work in 1899, along with two other scientists, Geiger and Marsden. Now, his work led to the discovery that some materials emit these positively charged particles, which he called alpha particles. And he decided that once he'd found these alpha particles, he was actually going to fire them at this very thin sheet of gold foil. And what he found was that contrary to what they were expecting from the plum pudding model, which would be that the alpha particles would just go straight through, in fact, those particles actually reflected at a range of different angles, as well as some being able to pass through. And those results couldn't be explained by the plum pudding model, which suggested that Thompson's model was therefore wrong. Using these ideas, Rutherford then came up with his own model of the atom, which is what you can see on the right there, which is that an atom is made of a tiny positive nucleus in the center, surrounded by electrons. He also said that the nucleus has most of the mass of the atom, which was why the alpha particles bounced back, because as those alpha particles were traveling, if they hit the nucleus, then they'd be sent elsewhere, which is what his results actually showed. Since the time of Rutherford, we now know that the nucleus is made of protons and neutrons, but he didn't know that at the time. The last scientist we need to think about is Niels Bohr, whose work was carried out in 1913. And he suggested that the electrons move in fixed orbits called electron shells. And this now gives us the model of the atom that we're still using today. So in the centre, we've got that positive nucleus, which is Rutherford's contribution. And then Bohr's contribution is that the electrons are in these fixed orbits called electron shells that go around the nucleus. The last thing we need to know is a couple of key sizes. And when I say no, I mean you've actually got to learn these. From the specimen papers and the practice papers that have been released by OCR so far, this has cropped up on that multiple choice section quite a lot. So you need to know that an atom is about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 metres in diameter. So remember, atom diameter, 1 times 10 to the minus 10. And the radius of a nucleus, less likely to come up, but just in case, 1 times 10 to the minus 15 metres. Hopefully at the end of this video you can now describe how and why the model of the atom has changed, recalling the names of the scientists, surnames are fine, you don't need to remember their first names, and what their contribution was. You should be able to describe the structure of an atom and recall the typical size of the atom and of small molecules there. Hopefully you can remember them. If not, then I'd suggest you do a little search on YouTube for the history of the Atom song, which I love to play to my lot until it sticks in their heads.